Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I want to welcome you to another Let's Talk with R.C. Blakes. I'm just trying to get this microphone situated. I'm so excited about today's conversation. I think it's going to help uh, quite a few women, hopefully, because I think one of the major mistakes that women are making today and have made down through uh, all of time actually is that women approach relationships quite often from an emotional position and um, rarely if ever qualify a man for your lives. In other words, you, you see a man that you that you like, a man that um, moves the needle for you in terms of the visual, in terms of you know the the energy, the swag, whatever you may call it. But very rarely does a woman actually go through the process of qualifying a man for her life. Now it's it's uh, you know I think it's important for for men as well to qualify women certain women you know for for their lives as well or for our lives you know we should qualify a woman is a woman actually a wife can a woman actually uh, help me to be the best version of myself but it's more important in my opinion in my opinion. It's more important for a woman to qualify a man because a man does not run the same risk with a woman most of the time that a woman runs with allowing a man into her life. In most cases, a man is more of a physical threat to a woman than a woman is usually to a man. Of course, there are some cases today where women are physically abusive and, and men are in the more vulnerable position. In most cases, women run a greater emotional risk than men. Men tend to move on from relationships a lot easier a lot faster than women do. And so it's important for every woman to make certain that she knows how to qualify a man for her life. Now, these principles apply to all. Men watch this channel all of the time, and they take the very things, probably 95% of what I teach to women is applicable to men. And this is such a case that anybody can listen to this and benefit from it. But my assignment, I'm clear about my assignment. My assignment is to speak to generations of women from the perspective of a healthy, safe, fatherly, brotherly, uncle type, pastoral type man from that perspective. Now, when we think about qualifying people for our lives, uh, qualifying people for your life essentially means going through a process to determine whether someone is a good fit for you. 
determining if someone is a good fit for you and is this the kind of relationship you want to have with them. You know, it's just not wise to be the kind of woman that allows yourself to be invested sexually, allows yourself to be invested financially, allows yourself to be invested relative to giving a relationship all of your time, and then after two or three babies wake up and say, well, this is not the kind of relationship I want. This person is not a good fit for me. You should have figured all of that out before you allowed yourself to be so handsomely invested. You're like, you're like the woman that goes to the mall and, uh, you know, charges all of her cards to the max. And then she gets home and she has buyer's remorse. Well, that, you know, that can work out for you as long as you keep your receipts. In the mall, you can bring that stuff back. But when you have invested all that is you, into a relationship that should have never been because you did not go through a process of qualifying this person to be certain that this person actually fits your life and that this is actually what you want. You can't take it back and, you know, you when you, when you waste a life and time, that's time you'll never get back. When you've, when you've given your body to a man that never deserved a conversation, you know, that's an experience that you can't take back. Now, you know, there is such a thing as uh, uh, what we call it, uh, born-again virgins, where you, you know, you get, you know, you, you, you really re-sanctify yourself unto God, and it works. You know, it does work in terms of your psyche, in terms of your spiritual health and, and your mental health and all of that kind of thing, but... Why have to go through all of that when you could have very well employed a process of qualifying a person from the outset and you could have determined before things even took off that this person does not qualify to even be in my life on this level. That's what we want to deal with today. I want to talk about how to qualify someone for your life. I have about six points and then I'm done. I try to be, maybe I shouldn't say it because I'm always uh, longer than I anticipate. But number one, when, when you think about qualifying someone for your life, number one, it starts with this. You must be clear in your own mind and in your articulations, you must be clear about your values and your goals. You must be clear about your values and your goals. I love one of my favorite texts in, in the Bible is a very short verse, but it is so full of wisdom. In Amos 3 and 3, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed. Why are you rolling around in a bed with someone that you fundamentally disagree with in terms of values and goals? Why are you rolling around in a bed with someone that's satisfied in the basement when you have penthouse dreams? You know why? It's because you are not clear about your values and your goals. You allowed your type to take over. And quite often your type is not really your kind. There are a lot of men that you are attracted to physically, that you want to roll around in the bed with, that are not your kind. And you allow the, you know, the, the impulses of your flesh to pull you into a situationship 
that you should have never been in because the values don't align and the goals don't align, but other things align. And so you allow those other things to carry you away like Calgon. And it's much later after the trauma has set in that you realize that your type was never your kind. Before you can qualify someone for your life, you, my dear, need to know what you're looking for in a relationship. You need clarity. Hmm. You, need your, you need to have clarity relative to your values and your personal goals and make sure that the people you let into your life share these values and support your goals. Because if you check any relationship now that has fallen apart or is falling apart, there was a breakdown in terms of the values and a breakdown in terms of the goals. Those things did not gel. In these areas, these people were not aligned. Well, a wise person learns to be clear about his or her values and their goals internally and externally. Internally, you govern your ascent, or maybe I should say descent, into a relationship because you either go, it's either bringing you down or it's bringing you up. It's not leaving you in a neutral position. Relationships only bring us backwards or bring us forward. And when you, when you, when you're Engaging a potential relationship, you must engage from the perspective of my values and my goals. You can't engage a relationship from the perspective of your eyes or the stimulation of your organs if you catch my drift. You have to engage a relationship cerebrally and spiritually based on your values and your goals. Because you have a good time with someone tonight does not mean this is a relationship that can last for a lifetime. Relationships that last for a lifetime are based in shared values and goals. That's why Lisa and I work. It's because we shared values. We had the same values, same values. I don't know where we don't align in terms of values. And we had the same goals. And so if you're going to qualify someone for your life, you have to know your values and your goals, and you have to choose a person to enter your life. You have to approve of a person that shares your values and your goals. This is why Romans 12 and 2 talks about be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that when it talks about be not conformed, it means don't be don't be squeezed into a smaller version of yourself trying to, you know, make something fit that obviously does not fit. You're trying to squeeze a square peg into a round hole. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But you see, if you don't know, if you're not clear in your own mind about what your values are, what's really important to you, where you really want to go, and you're more enamored with someone's physique or how they stimulate you sexually, you will always forsake your values and your goals because your values and your goals are boring. When you compare that to someone that, that motivates you and stimulates you sexually, it's boring to be locked in and focused on your values and your goals. But I tell you what, it's sexy when you, those same values and goals make for 10 years, 20 years married, 30, 40 years married. It's sexy then. What feels good today usually call, causes pain tomorrow. What doesn't feel so good today usually causes great joy tomorrow. 
And the woman that is wise enough to forsake the, the momentary instant gratification of the things that draw most people together now and focuses on her values and her goals when approving of a man is a woman that will be happier tomorrow for it. Women that are that give in to the momentary gratification, the 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 you know the 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 instant gratification is the woman that's going to be sorry tomorrow. This is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 14, be not unequally yoked together. When you when you don't know what you value. How, what is it? How do you know if you're equally yoked together? That's not a visual, sexual kind of thing. That that has nothing to do with it. You can teach somebody how to be sexually um, successful in a relationship with you. You can take a person and bring a person to the barber, to the beautician, and and upgrade their their visual appeal. When he talks about being un be, be not unequally yoked, he's talking about values and goals. You know, how can you value God and then connect yourself with someone that doesn't even believe? You see, when you don't know, when you are not certain, when you don't know what you value, you can forget your value. Because your sense of value flows from your value. Now, number two, number two, how do we, how to qualify someone for your life? Be clear about your values and your goals. Number two, objectively observe their behavior. Stop being like a little schoolyard girl that's just carried away with, you know, uh, the jock. And learn to objectively observe a man's behavior. Pay attention to how you know, pay attention to how people behave around you and how people behave, watch this, even with others. You got to pay attention to their behavior. Do they treat others with respect? You see, a man that would disrespect a waiter, uh, a parking lot attendant, you know, um, someone that's serving in any capacity, a man that, that, that has, whose, whose um, character is so empty and so void, so lacking that he would disrespect anybody, it's just a matter of time before he will disrespect you. If a man has no respect for his mother, what makes you think he's going to <laughs> have respect for you? If, if a man... Uh, you know, speaks negatively and poorly about his ex and he's just getting to know you, well, you know, you're just the next ex. And at some point he's going to speak that way of you. You got to learn to pay attention to a person's behavior, not only their behavior towards you, but their behavior towards others. Are they dependable? And reliable. Stop making stop making excuses. A man that constantly tells you, I'm gonna pick you up Monday at you know seven o'clock, and he never shows up, or he never shows up on time, is a liar. It doesn't matter that you know, you know he's a he's a lawyer or he's an executive or he's this or that. Bay, I don't care who he is. He can be the president of the United States of America. If he really loves and respects you, he's going to be where he said he's going to be. And when he can't, he's going to call you. You got you to gotta objectively observe this man's behavior. He is not dependable. This man is not reliable. I don't care how you know handsome he is and how bad you think you want a husband and the clock is ticking and all of this kind of stuff. You know, the man don't want no job. That's why he don't have a job. He doesn't want one. Any man that's, that's comfortable sitting up in your house 
cooling by your air, spending your money, driving your car, wasting up your gas, and constantly talking about a brother can't get a break out here. I can't find a gig. Any man that calls a job a gig does not want a job. These observations can give you valuable insight when you can objectively observe a man's behavior, when you can step out of those butterflies for a moment and step into your very real conscious thoughts and you can analyze a situation for what it is. Now you've become a wise woman who's able to actually qualify a man for your life, for access to you. Now you're able to determine if a person is actually a good fit for your life or not. You're not one of these women, you know, that that lets a man come into your life and just wreck your whole life before you wake up and realize that I should have never let this man in. You don't need a bullet wound and, 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 and stab wounds and all of this to figure out this man is a, is, a, is a narcissist and, you know, he's a sociopath or even a psychopath. You can objectively observe a person's behavior. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 and 16, Jesus makes a powerful statement there. He says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Watch verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? You shall know them by their fruit. I tell people all of the time that want to come in and join the church that I pastor. Observe my behavior. You're praying about it? Don't be enamored by my, my public persona. Don't, don't be moved by the opinions of others that may have great things to say about me. When you're choosing a man to be your pastor, you want to sit and observe his behavior. Watch his ongoing consistent behavior. Watch how he moves with his wife, his children, his members in life in general. You want to objectively observe the behavior of anyone that you are allowing access to the innermost chambers of your heart. How much more must a woman objectively observe the behavior of a man that you're trying to let into your bed? This is how, these, these are some of the points in terms of qualifying a man for your life. Number three is a big one that I talk about a lot. You, you got to ask questions. You, you got to ask questions. You got to stop sitting around there just batting your eyes and popping all this bubble gum and, and sitting there with all this wet stuff on your lips and everything, just, just looking like you, you're just bucking your eyes and everything. Close your eyes up. Dry your lips off. Spit that gum out and ask this man some questions. You see, you ask people about their interests. You, you ask people about their values and you ask people about their goals. And you know what? You ask them again to see if they're consistent in their answers. This, this can help you to get a better sense of whether you share common ground. And whether they would be a good fit for your life. See, you got to get a snapshot of this man's heart. And how do you get a snapshot of a man's heart? You got to ask questions so that he can what? Talk. Because it's out of the mouth that the heart is revealed. You know a person's heart through their words. And a man that does not have good intentions is never going to be comfortable with questions. Because your questioning is a polite way of testing. Hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 says this in the Bible. It says, but test all things carefully 
so you can recognize what is good. Hold firmly to that which is good. If, if you're not asking questions, you, you're not really testing the inner workings of this man. You don't really know what you have here. You don't really know what you have here. And then what happens is you don't ask any questions. You don't qualify a man. You know what I'm saying? And then you, you let this man, you, you just carry it away with his exterior and all of these fanciful things he's telling you and all of this. You the finest woman he's ever seen and all that. Hey, come on now. Ain't no woman the finest woman. It, it, women are becoming more and more beautiful every day. Come on now. Come on now. You, you got to be smarter than that. You know, and you let him just talk you, and then he gets you into the bed. And then once, once you know, a man like that gets you into the bed and do all those tricks and all this kind of stuff, now you got a complete and total soul tie. You just gone now. You can't think. You can't pray. You can't do nothing. Babe, you better slow your happy self down. If you know what's good for you, you better slow your happy self down, cool yourself off, and you better start qualifying, brothers, because you done created too many soul ties not to know better than this. Questions reveal motives. If I ask you enough questions, I'm going to eventually hit up on something that's going to show me your heart. There's nothing that makes a man know a woman is gullible and credulous like a woman that sits there at a dinner table for an hour and a half and never asks a question. When you go to asking a question, brother says, oh, my, you got game going on? He says, oh, my, she ain't playing. She, she, she about her business. And you probably won't hear from him no more because a man has a different respect for a woman that interrogates him rather than a woman that is just moved by his game and all of this stuff he's saying and all this kind of stuff. And you, your mind just blown, your eyes just batting and everything. No, no, a man respects a woman that that shifts the, the conversation say, wait let me ask you a question huh huh you, you want to, yeah i want to ask you a question may i ask you listen to what the bible says in first kings 10 and 1 and when the queen of sheba heard of the fame of solomon concerning the name of the lord she came to prove him with hard questions queens ask questions that only kings can answer you ain't asking no questions we got some work to do to get you established in your queen consciousness. See, you got to ask, you got to ask questions, man. You, you, why do you need to ask questions? Well, you need to know where does this guy come from? You want to know his background? Yeah, you want to know, you know, you want to politely and, and wisely get to what was his relationship like with his father, his mother? Because a man with father wounds, he's going to present in most cases a a, a certain set of problems. A man with mother wound, a mother wound is going to present a whole nother set of problems. Man that's fighting and bickering with his uh, siblings, that's going to be another issue. You need to know where he comes from. You you need to know where he's at. If he's come from there and he has a, you know, a tainted or difficult background, is he in the pro is he in the process of healing? Has he healed? Where is he presently at with his life? We, we don't want to hear about, you know, his potential necessarily. We want to know what, what is the fruit? What kind of fruit do you have on the vine? This is your vision. This is where you say, you know, but what are you actually producing? We, we need to know where he's at. Then we need to know where he's going. See, you got to know these things because if you're going to be his woman, you got to be able to help him. You got to know where he's come from. You got to know where he's at. And you got to know where he's going to even figure out if you play a role in his life. He may be a great guy, but you may not qualify to, to meet the needs that he has in his life. And if, if you can't meet the needs he has in his life, he's not going to be effective meeting the needs you have in your life. But you'll never know this unless you do what? Ask questions. Lisa asked me so many questions. She wanted to know everything about me. Until today, she wants to know everything about me. As I shift, as I change, she wants to know everything about me. Even We've been married 29 years in October. She wants to know everything about me. She's always asking questions because queens ask questions. You cannot know a man's heart without asking questions.
Now, number four, how, how do you qualify a person for your life? How do you qualify, more specifically, a man for your life? Number four, you're going to have to spend calculated physical time with this man. I'm tired. Okay, let me calm down. Almost My nerves got bad right there. I don't like it when y'all reaching out to me telling me about you madly in love with a person. You know, you, you, you just think he's just, the, you know, God sent him into your life. And, and you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to get so excited for you, you know, while I'm reading this stuff. And then you, you finish the email off. You write a whole encyclopedia. Then you finish the encyclopedia off with, but well, we haven't met yet. So you madly in love. You know God sent a person that you've not spent any physical time with. All you've seen are pictures on social media site or, you know, maybe FaceTime. I don't know what y'all doing. You have not been in this person's presence. You got to spend time with people you're considering bringing into your life. There are things you're going to pick up from a person in person that you're not going to pick up over no phone. People can disguise a lot on a phone. This, this can help you to get a more complete picture of who they are and how they behave in different situations. You want to feel that energy. But you got to be in, in the presence of a person. Y'all with all this, about, you know, the dating sites and all that. And I ain't, I'm not going to necessarily kick against, kick against it because, you know, this is a different generation. And things are happening differently now. And even some people my age are finding love on social media sites. But I pray God that you, you at least insist on being in the presence of, of a person, calculated physical time, meaning don't put yourself in a dangerous situation until you really have had enough conversation. And even then you want to make certain that you are controlling the environment that you're safe, but you don't want to be trying to push full steam ahead in a situation with somebody that you've never spent any time with. Because anybody that avoids face-to-face -face time is deceptive. That's just my opinion. You were a man, you, you, you've been talking to a man for a year, and he's not insisted on coming to see you. And, and more than likely, you know, if we were to really give you some truth serum, you sending money. You sending this man money for stuff. He done blew your mind on the phone. He just pimping you for money and everything. Come on now. Come on, baby. Any man that really want a woman, he gonna, he's going to force his way into her presence. And there you are con drawing conclusions about what this is and what it can be. And you've never spent a moment of physical time in this man's presence. I like what the Bible says about um, a husband, a, a new husband. We can, we, can take some, we can take some wisdom from this. In Deuteronomy 24, 5, it says, When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Don't go off to war. We don't want you in Iraq, Afghanistan. We don't want you none of, stay home. Neither shall he be charged with any business. We don't want you working too much. But he shall be free at home one year, 12 months, and shall cheer up his wife, which he hath taken. Because when a man loves a woman... One of, the, one of the greatest needs of a woman is time. Some of you women, you know, nobody's even taught you that you needed that. And so you're you reaching for the man that makes six figures or seven figures and all of that. And what happens is a lot of times you get that kind of man, but that kind of man, the last thing he's going to give you is time. He'll, he'll let you go shopping. He'll get your credit cards. He'll have flowers sent to the house for you, but he ain't going to give you no time. And you know what? Communicates love to the heart of a woman when she gets all out of her head and she, you know, she stopped popping that gum and wipe all that grease off her lips. And she's really thinking like a grown woman. She needs a man that's really going to give her time. And if, if you're dealing with a man that 
you've not spent time with and he's not insisted on it. There's something there's something fishy about that. You can't really qualify a person. You can't say that this person is this or that in my life that you've not spent time with. And by time, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about in the bed having sex. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about quality time where you get to feel this person's energy. You get to know this person. You get to question this person. They get to talk to you and you get to observe this person. You got to, you got to spend time. Number five, number five. In terms of qualifying a person for your life. Actually, I don't have six. I only have five. Number five, you're going to have to trust your inner guide. Every one of us, we have an inner guide. Now, some people call it your gut instincts. Uh, church folk, we, we, we'll call it your discernment. Um, uh, others might call it intuition, but if, if something feels off or something feels wrong, pay attention to that feeling, watch this, and investigate further before making any decisions. When I was a young man and, um, I was dating uh, there were some women I just didn't get a good feeling about. And I, I, I knew better than to let it go beyond a couple of dates or conversations because I, I just didn't feel, I, I kind of, my gut said, this is going to be a problem right here. This is going to be, this is going to be some eggs on the windshield. This is going to be a, a key scratch down the side of the car. This is going to be some windows at the house broken out right here. And I moved on from that. Well, if, if a man needs to have that kind of inner guide, if Holy Spirit will guide a man like that, how much more will he guide one of his daughters? You know what the problem is? He's guiding you, but you're not listening. You've bought into this idea that the clock is ticking and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've hit the wall. I'm run over. The, I'm running over the cliff and. I just got to make something happen, you know, because after all, you know, a woman ain't nothing without a relationship. That's a mindset that is setting you back. I heard Dr. Uh, Creflo Dollar say something, and I just got to say this, it, you know, it's kind of off track, but I'll get back on track. But I thought it was a powerful statement and it was so true. And it struck me when he said it. He said, in the church, we have preached marriage like marriage is the is the ideal when the reality is single is the ideal marriage is a sacrifice but we've preached in the church like if you're not married you don't have a man you don't have a wife there's something deficient about you you're incomplete when the reality is god says those that are single are married to the lord they can do whatever i tell them to do at any given time those that are married are married to the world. They got to please their husbands and their wives. Marriage is a downgrade. Single is the ideal. But when you've bought into that stuff, you cannot trust your inner voice when Holy Spirit is saying to you, no, 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 time out. This ain't the one because you're desperate to make something happen. You are ignoring Holy Spirit. You, you have turned down the volume on Holy Spirit's mic. You have shut down your intellect. You're not even thinking clearly. But your inner voice is constantly saying, no, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. And you can feel it. You just feel like something's not right. You know, something's off. Something's not clicking. But because you, you as a woman, you feel like you... I'm 35 years old. I'm 40 years old. If I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? It's better to never do it than to do it the wrong way. 
because you can be happy all by yourself. You can succeed all by yourself. In fact, you should succeed by yourself and you should be happy by yourself before you ever consider qualifying somebody else for your life. If you're not happy by yourself, you, you should restrict yourself from even being out here trying. Listen to what Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 says. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. But notice what it says in the, in the first part of that verse. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. In other words, if I don't have peace about it, I ain't rocking with it because God is going to guide me by my inner peace. It can look good on paper. It can be a business deal. It can look good on paper. It can sound like a great situation. You know what I mean? I, I can see nothing in the natural, in the visible world that says run, forest, run. But if my spirit is saying, mm -mm, this is not right, I'm walking away from that. You have to get to a point where you, you are so in love with God and God has given you so much self-love that a man that looks like the perfect fit, looks like a dream, but you, you feel that inner dis-ease, you can walk away from that. Say, I just didn't feel right about it. Your friends say, girl, you got to be crazy. That man was this, that man was that, and da-da-da-da-da, and all that kind of stuff. Babe, when you follow that inner guide, when you follow that inner peace, you cannot go wrong. And, and, and let me tell you something. When you learn to walk away from what God tells you to walk away from, God always creates a door for you to walk into everything you ever imagined and more. But God can't create the door for you to walk into more than you've ever imagined because you never walk away from God, from what God tells you to walk away from. So you always preoccupied with stuff God never sent because you never listen to that inner voice. And then finally, I'm quitting early today. Look at here. Romans 8 and 14 says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Holy Spirit will lead you if you open your heart to be led. Holy Spirit will guide you. Holy Spirit doesn't just speak to preachers. Holy Spirit is talking to you. you you've said it a, a number of times. Something told me not to. Something told me not to. Well, it wasn't really something. It was someone. Holy Spirit was telling you, don't do this. Don't go in this direction. We love you. I love you too much for this. Please don't do this. And you went on ahead anyway because you thought you was getting something. When your inner guide tells you, no, shut it down. When your inner guide says, yes, but this is how you begin to qualify people for your life. Let me go over them one more time, then I'm done. You got to be clear about your values and your goals. You got to objectively observe their ongoing behavior. Number three, you got to ask questions. Number four, you got to spend calculated physical time with this person that you might observe them intentionally. And then number five, you got to trust your inner guide. Trust your inner voice. Trust the Holy Spirit. Trust your discernment. Trust your intuition, whatever you want to call it. Watch this. And beyond the spiritual, trust your past experiences. Your, your past experiences will rise up and say, no, this, this reminds me of that, reminds me of that. And no, no, no. You need to probably just kind of bow out of this one. But you got to learn to trust your inner guide. And when you learn to trust your inner guide, and you learn to qualify people for your life. How is it that people have to try out for a football team or a basketball team? People have to try out for the band. People have to try out for the cheerleaders. 
You got to go and pass a driving test to drive a car, and you're going to let somebody just walk up into your life all willy-nilly without any qualification? You deserve better, better than that. May I pray for you? Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. Now, Father, my prayer is that you will allow the words that I've spoken to resonate and allow wisdom to come forth in every heart. God, I thank you now that you will cause wisdom to come forth in every heart. Those that are presently on the verge of making mistakes, turn them around. Give them clarity. Cause this message to ring loud and clear in their hearts and in their heads. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, I've enjoyed this time. Don't forget to go and register for Queenology 2023, the crowning. We are having it in New Orleans, Louisiana. The host hotel is going to be the Ritz-Carlton because this is the coronation. We got to do it grand style. I think it's August 25th, 26th, 27th. Go to www.queenology.net and register for Queenology right now. I'm looking to have this thing sold out by July. I am. I want it sold completely out by July. And register this week because prices are going up in July. But I'm really praying to have it sold out by July. Register now at queenology.net. Go to my website, rcblakes.com. Sign up for my mailing list. Check out all of the online programs while they are yet there. That's all I'm going to say about that, while they are yet there. Uh, don't forget to stop by Amazon. Pick up all of my books, audio, electronic version, physical books. Go to Amazon. Check them out now. Look in the description if you need counseling. We have an amazing connection with BetterHelp Counseling. If you check BetterHelp out and you decide that this is something that can work for you, and if you use our link for RSC Blake's Ministries, it will afford you 10% off of their, the cost of their counseling, and they in turn will make a deposit into RSC Blake's Ministries for my referring them to you. Now, uh, I think I've said everything I need to say. Listen, Lisa and I love you. We thank God for all of you that have sown into our lives. We appreciate you so much. Um, before you leave, make certain that you like and share this message. You got to help me to bring this message to even a greater audience. And every time you come on here, if you hit that like button, man, it helps the algorithm to pick up this message and put it before people that really need it. So make certain that you like this before you leave today. Now, I think I'm done, and um, I want you to know that Lisa and I love you. You're on top. You're going higher. God has more in store for you, so we will see you at the top. Don't forget, register for Queenology, and know that we love you. Until next time, God bless. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.